Today we're going to look at the installation and measurements for the cylinder liner in a wet sleeve application on the Detroit 60 series engine. Um, this engine in particular, it uses uh, a counter bore that the sleeve sits into and the manufacturer has prescribed a certain height that that liner has to sit to for, permiss per for a permissible value for how high that liner sits to create the clamping force needed on the cylinder head to hold the liner in its respected position during operation in the engine. So the manufacturer has also laid out a prescribed value of the thickness of the head gasket so that when we crush down the head gasket that we actually crush down on top of the liner and create the clamping force we need on that liner while creating the sealing capacity also on the uh, head gasket itself. So a couple different things we look at nomenclature. This is the deck surface of the block that is the mating surface to the fire deck of the cylinder head. This particular area right down here is what we call our counter bore. So this area here is our counter bore. Okay, the manufacturer has manufa or machined this to fit into the liner flange as you can see on the adjacent cylinders so that when it's sitting in its correct position and it's clamped with the head on it, we're going to have our head gasket sitting here, the fire ring of our head gasket, and then this mating surface here, which is the liner protrusion, butted against the underside of the fire deck of the cylinder head. Um, so if we take a look at the nomenclature related directly to the wet sleeve liner itself, you can see that we have a couple different seals on here. One of these seals is going to be replaced. This is one of the main cooling system crevice seals. And then we have an adjacent seal that works in combination capacity with the cooling system seal. So if the cooling system seal leaks, the combination capacity seal helps back up the coolant uh, crevice seal. Vice versa on the bottom end we have an engine oil seal which also works in combination capacity with the secondary seal. So if the oil seal leaks the secondary seals helps prevent oil from getting from the bottom end up into the cooling system, into this area. So when that happens, then we get the mixing of coolant and oil together, either or are destructive to the cooling system as well as to the lubrication system. So on the top of the liner, right here, we have what's called coolant relief. And if we look in the block, right here, you can see that we have a uh, coolant passage that's cut in here. That allows coolant to flow all the way around. And if we look back at the liner, all the way around the circumference of the liner, that helps absorb and dissipate some of the heat from compression loading as well as combustion loading at the point of ignition in the compression ignition engine. So this manufacturer has provided extra top liner cooling relief to actually help absorb and dissipate that heat. So the liner flange right here, what we're looking at, this particular measurement, has to fit into the counter bore and have a certain amount of protrusion sticking up above to create the clamping force needed to hold that liner in its respected position. We have an apparatus that's going to actually hold our liner down in position when we actually check the protrusion and we have the tools to correspond with that procedure. It's to check what the manufacturer asks us to check and it's to check in four positions all the way around the circumference of the liner counter bore in the block. So the manufacturer says that it should not exceed any more than 0 0.3510 inches. And if I check this with my depth gauge on our vernier caliper, I can see that I have exactly what the manufacturer has prescribed for us for a measurement. Now this can also be done by taking a dial indicator zeroing it on the deck and then dropping it into the hole to read the value. I've chosen to use my vernier caliper. Now the next thing that we have to do is once that the counter bore has been cleaned and it can be cleaned with some crocus cloth, some light emery, 
or even a scratch bright pad. It's important to make sure that we don't drop any debris into the bottom end of the engine or to put a cup in there to prevent any debris from dropping into the bottom end of the engine. Once this has been cleaned appropriately and we wash it out with a little bit of brake clean, Wait for him to stop yelling at everybody. Yeah. Okay, so taking a look now that we've actually cleaned this uh, area with some brake clean to remove any debris, I've gone in and I've used a Scotch Brite pad to make sure that we do not have any debris in here. We've done, we've gone and checked the measurement based on manufactured specs, and we fall within specifications for how concentric or how equal the plane is. Anytime we have an unconcentric plane is when we have a difference in the deck surface compared to the counterbore. We can also talk about this in relationship to what's called parallelism if it's not sitting correctly. Parallelism also relates directly to checking the integrity of brake rotors checked in four points to make sure that that brake rotor is not collapsed. Well, we're doing the same thing here, checking at four points to make sure that we don't have what's called liner sloping, where the liner leans one way or the other or across the minor and major thrust area as the piston is rotating through the movement of the crankshaft and the up and down reciprocating motion of the piston. So once we know that our, our counter bore is correct, then what we need to do is we need to install our liner and then press our liner down into place with a liner stake for actually doing the measurement based on this manufacturer's design. So if we take our liner now and our liner is lubricated. Back up, if we take our liner. Okay. So if we take our liner that's already lubricated, okay, and we're gonna do a trial fit on this until we actually replace this crevice seal. So if we take our liner and we set our liner down into the bore. Okay, now that we've installed the liner, we're going to take the OEM tool and set it down on top of the liner and line up the head bolts to make sure that we have spot to position and tighten the tool. Now different manufacturers use different uh, tool apparatus to actually hold the liners down into position. And once we get this locked down, then we have a specific torque that this manufacturer would like us to torque these bolts to and to actually lock the liner down into position. So we'll torque these into place as per spec from the OEM and then we are going to use just a ratchet to drive our liner down into position. So you can see that the tool is actually driving this down into position without any effort, without using a hammer, without using a wooden block and then dropping it right down the protrusion of the liner flange going down into the counter bore until we are bottomed. So after torquing the apparatus into place, what we need to do now is position these little dogs that are on the tool. There's three of them, one here, one here, and one on the other side where you may not be able to see. This is to access the protrusion after we've staked the liner down with the tool. So we've torqued the apparatus on. The manufacturer now says to go ahead and to put 40, in, 40 foot pounds of torque down on top of this plate to put the cylinder in respect to where it should be sitting when the head's clamped on. So we double check it, make sure that we have that position correctly. Now the next tool I want to introduce here is a sled gauge. We call this a sled gauge because we can ride across the deck surface sliding this tool to check measurements. 
We have a dial indicator face on it that reads in half thou increments and reads up to 40 thou. Okay? So what we're going to do here now is we're going to set the sled gauge. And I'm going to turn it so I can see the scale. Okay, so we're going to take our sled gauge now and we're going to zero the gauge on the deck surface. And when we zero the gauge on the deck surface, now what we're going to do is we're going to read from the deck surface to the protrusion of the liner in the recess area of the tool. Okay, so setting the tool up now, we're sitting on top of the protrusion and we've got the gauge set at zero and we're going to slide off onto the block area and it's showing that we have one thou of distortion. So we're going to check this in three positions, here, here, and on the back side. And according to the manufacturer, we're not allowed to have any more than three thousandths of an inch. And through measurement, I have one thou at every position. So if we only have one thou, we're below manufacturer specifications. Now one of two things can happen. Because it says zero to three thou as a maximum, we're sitting at one, we're still permissible. If we have all of these the same when we check them all, and they're all the same, at one thou, then we're okay across the entire deck. If this one tends to be lower, so if the manufacturer said it's zero to three thou and we had one or two thou on the rest of them, we may want to bring this one up by putting a one thou shim underneath that liner to bring the protrusion up to a higher value so that we have more compressibility on the liner sleeve and it holds it in position.